Hello, my name is Henry Keen and we are UATV English. We are filming in an undisclosed location, of course. We are with Yevgeny. Yes. Yevgeny, hello. It's nice hello. to meet you. Thank you so very nice much for having too. us. So, I have a whole bunch of questions. First question, is that Ukrainian drone, right? You made this thing. Yes, this is absolutely Ukrainian drone. It is made in Ukraine. 80% of Ukrainian components are assembled by Ukrainian citizens on the territory of our country. What is this thing capable? It is capable of transporting up to 200 kilograms of cargo for long-range landmines, for difficult, let's say, combat conditions. It can withstand complex vibrations, low, over low temperatures up to minus 20, minus 15 degrees Celsius and plus 40 degrees. It also has variable modules. These are accessories that are placed on a drone, and with the help of these modules, you can change the purpose of this drone. What about the battery? The battery in this drone lasts from 10 to 20 kilometers, but can be replaced as required. If the military wants to go further than 20 kilometers, we put more batteries. What about the price? <laughs> what about the cost? I mean, this is an important question, you know. Yes, the basic version now costs 615 southern hryvnias, or about 15 southern dollars. This is without access, the basic version. But in the basic version there are things that can be changed, for example frequencies, cameras. It does not affect the price. The demand for drones is not only on the ground, but any large ones in Ukraine, because now there are units where cars work and drones, not people. So is that the only model that you make? Or you're thinking about maybe expanding, maybe doing something else? Skylab is your name, right? Skylab. Yes. That's a nice, nice name. I like it. So what are the plans? What are you planning to do? Skylab plans to saturate not only military robotic complexes, but also civilian ones after the war is over, because they are durable ones. They can work on enterprises, help in ports, and in any way with a large number of modifications, precisely by robots, that robots work and not people. How many times do you have to invest to learn to uh, uh, manipulate that thing? Basic training of a platform without accessories, without a tactical and strategic level of training, lasts up to three days. Can you please tell us a bit more about the logistics and the work in general and in particular on the front line? At the moment, logistics in the current war is one of the most difficult topics, because logistics has to wait. You can wait seven to eight days, and it is not a fact that it will even reach you. It has always been the most difficult problem in the war, because to bring something to the front line, any movement near the front line is, you know, always very dangerous. You constantly need to hide from the hits of the mines. You're constantly being watched, and one of the biggest losses in the war is just during logistics. It is the delivery of food, ammunition, water, and similar things. Therefore, for me, as a tester, it is very important that the drone carries out logistics functions, because it saves lives on the front line for our fighters and greatly simplifies the logistics process. Can you tell us a little bit more also about that wheels? I see they're very special. Yes, these are ALS wheels. They were developed by our engineers specifically to avoid punctures on the front line, because this is a very big problem. From screws, fittings and other items, the wheels are constantly punctured, as on cars, pickups, APCs, anything. And these tires are specially designed, so that even after a puncture you can safely get there and complete the set task. What about the camera? I can see the camera, is that right? 
Yes, our camera is day and night. You can monitor both day and night. You can also see the headlights with infrared lighting on the front. They illuminate the camera at night so that it is clearly visible how I look at the monitor during the day. It is very beautiful at night too. Riders on the storm. Riders on the storm. Into this house we're born. Circo 1 has a striking feature, that is, it is modular. Its modules can be removed and delivered. We have some modules as, for example, a miner, sub-miners for TM-62 mines designed to mine the territory. We also have a tug which can carry, in principle, any item, and the deminer system which can demine the territory for needs, make a passage for infantry for example, and in principle for equipment, if several deminers are used. Also, the main advantage of Circo 1 is that it is very light. It weighs only 72 kilograms, and it is easily lifted by two people. Its loading and unloading into pickups or any other vehicle is not a problem. I would also like to say that we have training. I conduct it, as well as it is conducted in the headquarters of the Defense Forces of Ukraine. We are also now creating a collaboration with training centers, which conduct commercial training, and it will also be possible to learn how to drive Circo there.